Taiji or Taiji Chuan. That is going to be the topic of this episode of Chi Life. So you get to join me for another little bit of a walk on the beach during this vlog. Uh, it's quite a nice place to record these when I get a chance, uh, particularly early in the morning when the light isn't too harsh. We're just, just at the tail end of sunrise here. Uh, so the temperature is nice, the lighting's not too bad for these logs. Uh, it's reasonably quiet, there are a few other people. It's not too many, but you can see them walking around, be walking past a few other people as we go. Um, so yeah, nice time to record these logs. So, Taiji or Taiji Chuan. This is going to be a little bit of a disambiguation video because a lot of people hear the word Taiji and they think of only one thing. And generally what they're thinking of is actually Taiji Chuan. So Taiji Chuan is a martial art. So the, the Taiji part is the same just as Taiji. The Chuan means fist. And so it's Taiji fist. Uh, so Taiji martial art. And that's, uh, in, in a sense, it's a type of Qigong. It's a martial art that uses lots of Qigong principles in the way that that martial art is practiced. And they use slow, mindful movement um, as a way of developing skill in that martial art, which is, you know, it's, it's an interesting application of Qigong principles. And interesting, the, the level of skill, strength, resilience, sensitivity, you know, all those sorts of things that can be developed within Taiji Chuan using those Qigong principles. And yeah, it's, it's a great art. I've practiced, I haven't done a huge amount of Taiji Chuan. I've done bits and pieces of it really uh, at different points over the years with different teachers. So yeah, great, great martial art. And a lot of people don't even realize it's a martial art because they do it um, with the intention of basically improving their health and well-being, which it's good for doing that. Um, and so, yeah, people hear the word Taiji, they immediately think, well, they think of that art, not realizing perhaps that there's a bit more to it than that. So if we break down the word Taiji, it's made of two parts, Tai and Ji. So the Ji means pole or limit or extreme. So by pole, like as a negative positive, that kind of pole or, or limit, you know, the, you know, the extent of something, the, the edge of something. Um, the Tai means great or grand, you know, big. So big polarity, big extreme, big limit. Um, one, one common uh, translation of this is, so the big grand and for the pole, um, ultimate, you know, extreme limit. So it's grand ultimate. And so this is one that a lot of people who practice, I don't know a lot, some people who practice Tai Chi Chuan, uh, like to use because it makes that martial art just sound like so awesome because it's grand ultimate fist like it's the best best martial art ever sort of thing and that's kind of how they like to interpret it it's not really the meaning of taiji so you could say yeah grand ultimate like that's technically not wrong but it's more it's like big polarity right um Big polarity martial art. That's actually probably more accurate, but it doesn't sound quite as cool. Um, and so Taiji is, uh, you could think of it as a philosophical concept, really. The idea of accentuating polarity. So accentuating the positive and negative pole, all sorts of polarity. Because, uh, yeah, from a Chinese perspective, this Taiji, this polarity, it's not just like positive and negative charge, it's things like hot and cold, 
high and low, left and right, you know, all of these sorts of very simple things, internal, external, these are all um, opposites between each other and therefore types of polarity. And when we, when we accentuate this polarity, polarity is very important in terms of creating flow, creating circulation of energy. If there's no polarity, there's no reason for things to move. And so when we accentuate this polarity, we create a more dynamic circulation, more dynamic movement. So the literal translation of Taiji is, well, yeah, great polarity or some version of that. Implicit within that is the idea of then having harmonious flow between the poles. And so I'm not actually wearing anything with a Taiji symbol on it right now. Uh, I, of, often I am, I have different t-shirts and you've probably seen it a lot. Um, the most common relatively modern depiction of Taiji as a symbol is where it's a circle and then with a wavy line through the middle of it and then a dot in each portion. Um, and this is showing, it shows a whole lot of really interesting things um, about the principle of Taiji, but particularly about the dynamic flow between yin and yang, between those poles, the way it creates um, circulation. I think it's really health, uh, helpful to be able to distinguish between Taiji Chuan, which does use principles of Taiji and it uses other Qigong principles as well, and just the concept of Taiji, uh, because the concept of Taiji applies much more broadly. In fact, it applies to everything we experience in life, um, everything we do. There's always um, understanding that polarity and the potential for dynamic flow between them is, is really helpful. And in addition to this, there are other practices that work with this principle of Taiji that are not Taiji Chuan. So for example, in the Elemental Alchemy Qigong program, uh, that is one of the Long White Cloud uh, Qigong programs, <clears throat> we teach a series of different practices, <clears throat> excuse me, where we have, we, we, we work with Wuji. So Wuji is no polarity, the Wu means no. Um, so it's a resetting of the energy to a state without extremes. Um, re really useful, I won't get into that too much. We then also work with Taiji Qigong. And that Taiji Qigong is not Taiji Chuan. It's not a martial art, not by any stretch. But it is practices which are um, accentuating, developing the polarity uh, within our energy, and then working on making that uh, circulation of energy more vigorous, more vital. Uh, and then from there we work with Wuxing, which is the, the five elements or the five phases, which flows naturally out of the circulation, the movement of Taiji. So un understanding, yeah, being able to distinguish between Taiji, the concept, the principle, and Taiji Chuan is quite useful to realize that Taiji applies to much more than just that martial art. It actually applies to everything in your life and certainly to many other types of practice as well. All right, hopefully that's been an interesting one for someone. I look forward to seeing you on another vlog soon.